Welcome everybody to Explore UT. This session is Mapping Your Way to a Nursing Education and Career. My name is Allison Wall. I am the Assistant Director for our Career Services and Recruitment Departments. And I am here today to talk to you a little bit about um, mainly our Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree, but I wanted to show that there are other degrees um, that we offer here at the School of Nursing as well. So today I will talk about the BSN. We do have an alternate entry Master of Science in Nursing program, which is for students who have a bachelor's degree in something other than nursing. This is an accelerated three-year program where they're able to receive their master's degree um, in three years. We have a traditional Master of Science in Nursing program, an alternate entry PhD program, a traditional PhD program, and also a doctor of nursing practice program. So there are a lot of people under one roof in a normal time, um, all, all going after various degrees, which, which makes the School of Nursing a pretty special place. But like I said, today we are talking about our BSN program. It is a direct entry program, which means once you are accepted as a nursing student, you are a professional nursing student day one. There is no pre-nursing. You will never have to reapply to get into the upper division coursework. You are a professional nursing student, period. Uh, the program is four years. There's no early graduation. Uh, some students come in with many, many units already under their belt, but that will unfortunately not get you out of here any quicker. Uh, you would work with, with your advisor in that case, and they would help kind of map out um, what your program looks like, what you can do to kind of fill in those gaps and what your options are. And then when you graduate, you graduate with a generalist degree, which means you do not specialize on any one unit in any one field, any one population. You will have exposure to many different types of nursing throughout your time here. So what can you expect your freshman year? So freshman year, you are on main campus. You are in the hubbub of it all. Um, and this is basically what your schedule might look like. It isn't until really your sophomore year that you start to come more and more to the School of Nursing for coursework. Um, but it's exactly how you want it to be. You want to be amongst the student body and going to various buildings and just having that college experience um, of taking your courses um, in the main part. You'll see if you haven't been here before, the nursing school, we're kind of located on the outskirts of campus, which is very nice. But when you're when you're starting off, you, you kind of want to be in a centralized location. So um, this is typically what your schedule may look like your freshman year. So going back to some of that exposure that I was talking about, these are the various types of nursing you will be rotating through. You will be working with adults, uh, mental health, maternity, pediatrics, public health, um, genetics. You will be taking a Spanish for healthcare professionals course, um, leadership and management of nursing care. You will go to long-term care facilities, acute care facilities, nursing homes, um, schools, all sorts of, of environments. Again, just to, expose you to the different kinds of nursing that there are because it doesn't just take place in a hospital there are a lot of different types of nursing that you can pursue with your degree so what is required of a nursing student basically everybody has these skills and these attributes in one way shape or form but when it comes to being a nurse and forming that nurse brain as as you would hear here um things can look a little different so for example communication skills you may be able to talk to anybody and everybody under the sun but when it comes to your patients communication can vary uh, you may have a patient who doesn't speak the same language as you you may have a patient who is an infant and they are screaming and they are crying and that is their way of communicating with you you may have a patient who is nonverbal you will be communicating with family members and friends and that is a whole different way of, of learning how to communicate so it's taking what you already have but molding it more um, for the healthcare sector So once you are accepted as a freshman, you will get your fingerprints taken right off the bat. Um, and the criminal background check is performed off of those fingerprints. A lot of this does not really come into play until you're entering your junior year when you're going out um, into the hospitals and actually working with uh, the general public. 
But in case that background check does not come back clear, because sometimes things happen in our past and, and it may just not come back clear, that gives you a good amount of time to go through the paperwork and the process with the Board of Nursing um, that you would have to do if it indeed came back not clear. Um, so that's just why right when you get here, you check that one off the list and then you don't really have to worry about any of these other ones um, until leading up until your junior year. Now, I will say that clean academic integrity record bullet, that one is important. You know, you, you know not to cheat, you know not to plagiarize. Um, and, and it doesn't mean it's not only an academic integrity record, anything at any point in time that could derail your um, progression within the degree plan. So if you originally have a clear background check. And then within those two years, something happens where at any point in time, if someone were to happen to run a background check on you, it, were, it would come back not clear. You are not compliant. Um, that is one of the compliance requirements. Um, if you happen to have something happen academically and you again are not compliant. And so if you're not compliant, you can't be out in the clinicals because you're not checked off as fully compliant to be out in these clinicals. So all of this to say is it can snowball rapidly if something were to happen and really set you back in the degree plan from graduating on time. So even though you're in college and it's fun and you're having fun with your friends and you're going to have friends from all over campus, all over the schools and colleges, um, what happens at, with the School of Nursing can be very different than what happens in one of the other colleges. The repercussions can vary. So just really having that first and foremost on your mind as you go through your, your time here in that it's a, it's a serious program because it's a serious profession. You're dealing with people's lives and it needs to be taken very seriously. So I won't, I won't hone in anymore on, on that bullet point, but just know that it is a rigorous program and something that you need to be really committed to, not just academically, but, but outside of your school life as well. In your sophomore year, you will start going into the simulation lab and skills lab that is here on campus um, upstairs in the nursing building. You will be practicing on these high functioning mannequins. Um, there's a mannequin that gives birth to the baby mannequin and the baby could be turning blue and screaming and then the mother mannequin's blood pressure could be dropping or heartbeat could be speeding up. And, and it's scenarios that you might just encounter in a real life setting. And so, you go into the Sims lab and the skills lab to really practice, practice on these dummies, even though they're very high performing. Um, it is just a dummy at the end of the day, but to really work on those skills and refine those skills and to learn and make mistakes and then learn from those mistakes uh, while you're in the safety of the lab versus being out in the hospital setting. So you will be coming into the sim lab and skills lab all throughout your junior and senior year as well. Anything you are going to be going and doing in the clinical setting, you will be doing in the sim and skills lab first. So some of the sites that our students rotate through are St. David's and Seton, all different locations um, of those hospital programs. Uh, Dell Children's Hospital, Austin State Hospital is where the mental health rotation takes place along with a few other sites. There's the Children's Wellness Center in Dell Valley. There are area school clinics that you will rotate through. And then in your final semester before you graduate, you will be going on something called capstone, which is you and a nurse preceptor one on one, and you are working their schedule. So if they are working 3pm to 3am, you are working 3pm to 3am. And it's just your kind of final push before graduation and you are being a nurse, you are using your skills, you are working on a patient load that your nurse preceptor is working. And it's really, I think the first time our students truly, truly feel like nurses because you are away from the rest of your cohort. You don't have your faculty member nearby. It is just you and a nurse. And it's an exciting, exciting way to, to kind of wrap up your time here um, in the nursing program. We do have an honors program. So if that is of interest to you, I would definitely look up more information on our website. You do need to have a GPA. So you would apply your freshman year, but after that first semester, 
um, if you are really into research or working with faculty members um, on, on a topic that's really of interest to you, I would highly recommend looking into this program. These are a few of the topics that our students have presented on in the past. So this is something, there are various stipulations um, that you need to have prior to being accepted. And then once you are in the program, you have to maintain um, those stipulations as well, but something to think about. And we also have a nursing abroad, specific nursing study abroad opportunity in Costa Rica. You do receive credit for two of the courses that are on your schedule. Um, it is six weeks during the summer. Two of our faculty members go on this trip. And it is, I, we say it's ideal for summer after your freshman year. That is just because you have probably the most flexibility in your schedule after that freshman year. Once you hit that summer before junior year, things can start getting a lot more, um, your schedule becomes more packed. You might be taking pharmacology during summer school. You might be doing a nurse externship. You, it, it's, it's not, impossible to take it that next summer, but just ideally the, the summer after your freshman year. Once you hit your junior year on, um, it would be very, very difficult to, to take part in one of these abroad opportunities just because of, of what your schedule is um, for, for the, those final two years. There are many, many, many different student organizations across campus. There is the specific Nursing Student Association, but there are so many more that you can look into and, and be a member of. We have an honor society as well. So again, you know, it's a great way to have a community. It's a great way to find out about volunteering opportunities. Um, something that if you can commit to more than one, then that's fantastic, but it's just a great way to get involved. We work with two community clinics. I already mentioned the Children's Wellness Center. We also partner with the Family Wellness Center, which is right here by the nursing school. There are disaster drills that take place. Um, and because it's not really if, but when something happens and you are working, what do you do? What do you do first? Who do you call? Can you call? Um, again, it's preparing you for, for that real world situation. We have simulation day where faculty and other students simulate a patient and a scenario and you as the nurse have to diagnose the patient and figure out what to do. And then we have a flu shot clinic where you can help give flu shots to, to the UT community. So um, there's some hands-on experience you can get there. So how can we help you be successful? We understand that coming to college is a very big deal. It doesn't matter where you're from, how big your town is, um, coming to college is a totally different thing. And it can be very, very hard, especially if you're coming from a small town or you've never lived away from home before. Um, and, and we understand that it can be very, very overwhelming. So something that we have, they're called FIGS or first year interest groups. And it's you and about 12 to 15 other nursing students who have the exact same schedule your entire freshman year. So while you are on main campus going to all your various classes, there are 12 to 15 of you who have the exact same class schedule because you are all nursing students. And it's just a way to have that community and that support system right off the bat. So we highly, highly recommend you taking part in this FIG group. Um, it's not mandatory, but I would say 99.999% of our students take part in that. We do have free tutoring here at the nursing school. We have various workshops we put on. We have our career services, which is what my department is. Uh, we help you with resumes and cover letters and, and externships during the summer and residency programs and connecting you with employers and bringing employers to campus to talk with you. Um, all to, you know, the, the main goal is that you have a job in hand before you graduate. So that way, all you have to worry about is sitting for your license exam. Uh, we have scholarships. So please look into those. There's a 40 acre scholars program that you may want to look into. We have a care counselor who is here located on our floor here in the nursing building, specifically for nursing students to go and to talk to her. It is completely free and it is completely confidential. So what you talk about, she can't tell your parents, she can't tell your friends, she can't tell your faculty members, she can't tell the dean. It is completely confidential and it can be anything from 
I'm homesick. You know, it's my first time away from home and I'm homesick. Or, or maybe you're having to adjust to a roommate situation that you're not used to. Um, maybe you are struggling a little bit with your studies and that's not typical for you. So how do you navigate that um, to obviously much larger and more complex uh, situations? And she is there to help you every step of the way. She is fantastic. And a lot of our nursing students uh, make appointments with her. So highly, highly recommended. And then just campus wide, there is a plethora of resources and support for you, again, to make you feel supported, that you're not just one face in the sea of tens of thousands of faces, um, that you matter. And we want you to succeed and feel comfortable and confident in your time here at the university. So anything we can do at the nursing school or campus wide, um, we will do to help you. So the big question is how do you apply when the time comes, whether that is now or later, how do you apply? You will apply through the admissions website. It is one application to both the university and the nursing school. Um, as that last bullet point says, you must list nursing as your first choice major. And then there is, you have a second preference you can choose as well. There's an essay, there's some short answer prompts, you'll submit a resume with your activities and your involvement and your leadership um, that, that, you, that you've shown in the past. So all of that will go on that resume. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, you will find out generally, let's see, applications open August 1st, they close December 1st, and then you usually will find out that following February. Um, as to whether or not you are accepted to the university, accepted to the nursing school, accepted at your second preference or what. But that is basically the process. It is a holistic review, which means that they look at not only your GPA, but they look at that resume and they read your answer prompts or your answers to the prompts and your essays, and they take everything into account. So being strong across the board is what they are looking for. So. I would say don't worry about what others around you are doing and what they're submitting or how much experience they have. Just focus on your application and what can you do to make yours as strong as it can be because that's the only thing you have control over. So that is it for my spiel on our bachelor's program. If you have uh, further questions or, or need clarification or anything, please feel free to email that SS at nursing email address that goes straight to our student services inbox and um, your questions will be answered very promptly. We have, uh, it used to be called Discover Nursing, which is what that second website is. It's now through Johnson & Johnson, um, but it's again being able to really research the field of nursing. What does that mean? What kind of opportunities are there? If you don't want to go work in a hospital, what else can you do? If you don't want to work in a clinic, what else can you do? So that's a really great discovery tool. And then we have a parent specific website as well. So I think that's it, but I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for attending this session. And we hope to see you very, very soon. So take care, enjoy the rest of your time.